So what I'm going to go over today is cutting vinyl records. Now I've been trying to solve this process for a while now and I've found that if you try to use the standard uh, two flute end mill that it melts the material that the records are made out of really really easy. It'll ball up, gum up on the tool and if it doesn't break the tool then it causes a big glob on the, on the material itself. So I've gone to single flute uh, end mills. They're basically one cutting edge and a high helical uh, channel to pull the chips out and just like an end mill what it causes is that helical angle is that it pulls the plastic material up. So this, these things are really thin and if you walk around the edge here you can I don't know if you can see this with my camera on my head or not you can see how much this thing flexes. It's low here and it's low here because this is my crappy clamping method but when it gets to right here this end mill is going to grab and it's going to pull it up and it's going to cause a lot of vibration so I'll try and solve some of that I'm going to make a better fixture but right now I'm using a 2 millimeter end mill because I found that the larger ones they take such a harsh bite that it causes the material to bounce around and flex so this 2 millimeter is the one that I've found works the best so far and there's not a lot of information about how to cut these on the internet. There's a couple guys that have some information out there and their information just was not working for what I was trying to do. So I've pretty much developed this way and it seems to work really good. The method that they were talking about was using a two flute end mill, either a 1 16th or a 1 8th, plunging all the way through the material and cutting it all at once and that's very very violent I've tried that a couple times so what I've devised is take a two millimeter end mill step down you know trace the profile of your your letters or whatever design and step down 0.2 millimeters and do it so it'll take about 10 to 15 passes around the the geometry before it breaks all the way through but it keeps the violence and the bouncing pretty much to a manageable limit. So let's just go ahead. I've got this part loaded up here. We're going to turn the spindle on. I found that at about a thousand millimeters a minute, 19,000 RPM and 0.2 millimeter step down is right on the edge of almost making it melt. But it works pretty decent. So we're going to click start. You can see it melt up a little bit there, but it's just enough to where the pass will come back and clean it up. I don't know how well you can hear me over the noise of the machine running. It's the first time I've used this camera. You can hear that popping sound and actually watch the material being pulled up. And I know right now I'm feeding the internet trolls by putting my finger down here next to a moving machine, but well, oh well. what I'm doing with my finger is nothing more than allowing it to take some of the vibration out of the material bouncing.
I got a little hairy. That was a perfect example of how inherently unflat these things really are, is how they bend is this side's a lot lower than this over here. Yeah, I may have these tighter than I have over on the ones on the other side. But what I try to do is when I screw these in, is screw them in with the power drill and right before they touch, stop and use a screwdriver and just torque it down toward this washer, just touches it. So these I can still actually move with my fingers a little bit, otherwise if you crank them down, the centerpiece bulges out. And then having this one in the center pushes the center down so it's low, high, low as far as the flat parts. You see, the closer we get to the screw, the more it dips in. And if I was to loosen this up a little bit, it'll spring up and actually take more of a bite. But I'll have to do that with the one in the center when it starts doing the cutout in the center. One thing I will say is when you're setting these up and you're setting your material up, always verify that your tool path is not going to run into your center screw. You know, kind of like something like this. Now we need to loosen this screw up a little bit because as you can tell it's low right here and higher there so if I loosen this up on this next pass around it'll actually be able to cut it. But I introduce more vibration so I'm going to have to take my fingers and just kind of walk it around you know feed the internet trolls. But somebody out there is still going to say you shouldn't be putting your fingers in the way of the cutter. You can cut your finger. And I'm all for constructive, you know, criticism or help, but all you want to do is sit there and make fun of somebody else. You know, they're making something and you're sitting on your couch or on YouTube, you know, goofing around, not making anything, then you can't really talk. So I can tell I'm cutting the bottom label, so I'm almost all the way through in some sections. I'm most of the way, all the way around, all the way through. It's just this area right here is still really low. The reason why I'm keeping my fingers across this part is the last thing I want is just coming loose and breaking my tool. So I'm just kind of holding it there because once it finishes all this, there's not, not going to be anything holding it in there. And I thought about putting tabs to hold it in there, but that's just going to create more 
up and down Z moves that's going to flex the record. But I have done the tabs before and they do work. Like we are just at the label. Every place else is cut. You can see how it's pulling up. That's what I don't want it to do. Especially in these two corners here because there's nothing really holding it down. It's flimsy, so just using my fingers. Through the label on that cut. Through the label on that cut. And we are free. And there we have it. That's the end of the program. Jog this machine back and over. Don't want to crash it. Hit the shot back. my fixture in here really does suck because there's you know I want to make a shroud that'll go around and push down not in and down but until I get some more MDF this is just gonna work and I'm still proofing seeing what works what doesn't work you know what's preferred like that end mill that I'm using now I've cut quite a few records with that one so I'm sure that the the cutting edge is pretty dull this is more just for educational like I said I could not find much information nobody had this is the tool I'm using this is how deep I'm cutting here's my speeds and feeds do this don't do that gonna need some cleanup on that one it didn't cut all the way through but just enough and there you have it that's the finished product let's go over here throw it on the light box this is my peace sign now on some of these other ones that I've done you know, this one's a fairly large one, so there's not a lot of really thin parts. Like this Batman one. These here I had to thicken up, and these I had to thicken up because it would bounce so much that they would break. And then this one I had to add some supports in just to keep things from falling out. So, I mean, you have to play with it a little bit. And this one... See how small these bars were in here and I had to go really I'd be really careful and actually use my fingers to help hold everything down just so it would cut through and not break them out kind of like this one this piece right here was so thin and there was a letter here that when that larger end mill came in and it was chomping on it and this one was all the way through all at once Everything was bouncing around. It was really, really violent. 
and even some of these little tabs like that one still broke it just didn't break off so I knew after a couple of these that I was not going to do it the way that they had planned like that one's busted out there busted out there busted this out here it's just a real ugly cut and very violent this one I started getting a little bit cleaner, a little smaller end mill, step downs in the tool paths, you know, just chilled out. Instead of trying to make what they said work, it's like go with what actually works. You know, like this one I had to take it a little easier because we had all these small ones, but once I got to the process of, you know, slowing it down, taking less of a bite, using a single fluid end mill so it wouldn't ball up and melt I got really decent results yeah, I mean look at that that's pretty cool well if this video worked out because I'm testing my new camera if it worked out then you'll see it if it didn't work out then you won't see it hope this helps somebody